Hey, hello everybody. I would like to welcome you to the lecture Channel Coding Graph-Based Codes. This is not a new lecture. This is a lecture that we had been offering already the past years, where it was called Channel Coding 2, Advanced Methods. With the introduction of a new lecture, Channel Coding Algebraic Methods for Communication and Data Storage, we decided to reshuffle the contents of the lectures a little bit and rename the lecture. This is the lecture that is called Channel Coding Graph-Based Codes. So we start this series of videos for the lecture with a few details about the organization. So the literature that the lecture is mainly um, based upon is given here. So these are the main reference books that we use. Um, there is no need to buy those books. Um, two of the books can be found online which is the one on modern coding theory that is um, that we use for a couple of topics and uh, you can download it online. I hope the link will still work, but if you um, type it into Google, you will find the, um, the page or you find the link, the actual link. And the second one is um, for some of the more basic stuff is uh, David McKay's book, which is called Information Theory Inference learning algorithms, which is also available online. And uh, for the um, deep parts, uh, we will use Ryan and Lynn and Todd Moon, which is called Error Correction Coding. Um, unfortunately, you will not be able to find those books online. Uh, our library has some copies, but there is also no need to get because all the reference material is in the lecture notes and we'll also have um, so we'll have the slides that you get, and we'll also have lecture notes, written lecture notes that we are currently revisiting, and uh, they will also be at your disposal, hopefully, during the during the term. So, um, in case you need a refreshment on digital communications, um, sorry for the mishap on the slide. Um, this is some some reference books, so. Um, we'll assume general knowledge from basic communication course. So you should have visited Communication Engineering 1 at least, Nachrichtentechnik 1, but it will not hurt to have visited Communication Engineering 2. So if you think you're lacking a background in Communication Engineering, then we um, recommend the following book. So the main reference book is um, Roakis and Salehi, Digital Communications. German one is Nachrichtenübertragung by Mr. Kammerer. And you have also two very accessible books. This one can be found online, um, Fundamentals of Wireless Communication, and the one by Gallagher, which is Principles of Digital Communications, which is a little bit more math heavy than the other ones, but also a little bit more precise. So what is the goal of the lecture? Well, the primary goal of the lecture is to know the contents of the lecture. So you should know the contents of the lecture. This is the main goal. But there are some secondary goals. Secondary goals are to understand the fundamental importance of channel coding for every communication system. So every, there is no communication system that works without using channel coding. And so it's a very fundamental technique that's being used in almost every, every communication system. The second goal is also to understand the tools and techniques we use in modern channel coding. So we use a couple of mathematical tools that are very, very powerful and that you may not have looked at in such depth in your previous exposure. And understanding these tools is something that you can also apply in other um, applications. So, um, when talking about channel coding, it's always about communication systems and we'll understand also some of the challenges of modern communication systems. And we'll also understand how these challenges can be solved. And we'll also see that we can transfer this knowledge to some related problems like cryptography, throughput optimization in computer networks, and some more. And uh, we'll also show some practical examples, see what codes are being used in practical schemes. And this will also give you some exposure on um, 
trying to see how you can attack a practical coding system or communication system. And then the idea is also that you transfer this knowledge to other domains of engineering that you may be working on. So if you decide not to pursue a career in channel coding, um, you will nevertheless learn some techniques and tools that you can apply in other domains or in other fields, subfields, where you will be working on. Usually they are closely related to communications, but also in automation, in control. You need some of the tools that we are using in this lecture. So the lecture itself is based on some components. We'll have the slides which serve as a rough guideline and they guide you to the lecture, cover also a large part of the contents. And then we'll have some lecture notes. So usually we distribute those at the end of the term because I'm changing a few things in the lecture. So we will have some topics that will be expanded. And if I and this will be done um, on the fly during the term. And if I give you the lecture notes right now, they will be outdated possibly at the end of the term. So you will get the lecture notes at the end of the term and uh, hopefully a little bit earlier. And that will serve as a guideline on um, yeah, preparation for the exam. So it may happen that um, the lecture notes contain much more information than is in the lecture actually. This is on purpose. Um, because the lecture notes are more vast and we will denote which topics are not part of the lecture. So there will be a small star or visualization to see which of these things are not a part of the lecture. And if you are interested, you have some material for self-learning. So if you say, oh, this is some something interesting, we'll not cover it in the lecture because of time, but I still find it useful for myself, you can still look at these things but we will not cover everything that's in the lecture notes inside the term. So everything that's relevant for the exam is in the slides. Um, you will see we very often to add additional handwritten notes for further explanations. So um, as a disclaimer, I will not upload those handwritten notes to Ilias uh, because the lecture are available and just the notes themselves don't necessarily make sense on their own. The notes make sense together with what I'm explaining with my speaking and in the sequence they are being written. So in case uh, you would like to follow the notes, please watch the video and take the notes by yourself. Copy the notes by yourself from the video because this will actually help you in understanding much further. Then we also offer some simulations or some program code for both applying and visualizing some of the lecture contents. And we'll always refer to books and research papers in, um, in case this is interesting to get you further details and to expand some of the knowledge. So the slides themselves are not complete. The slides should always be considered together with my handwritten additions. So, um, as I said, I'm constantly rearranging the lecture a little bit. So there may be some inconsistencies and hops in the flow. If you find such an inconsistency, please let me know. If you find, have a suggestion for improvement, please let me know. It is very important that um, we get to fix these inconsistencies. So if you would like to look at the simulations that we provide, um, we do this. Uh, using Python, both Python and MATLAB. So we are not fixed on one um, language. So uh, we use Python that you know probably from our other lectures. Uh, you can install the um, simulation environment very easily using Anaconda. So you can download Anaconda. It will give you set up um, environment and using the Anaconda Navigator, you can trigger Jupyter, and then you can run the simulations in the notebook format. So these files, IPy and B are notebooks. You can open them in your web browser and you can run the code inside your web browser. 
And this is the symbol for Jupiter. So once, whenever you see this, this symbol on the slides, you will have a small footnote and inside the footnote, you will see the name of the program code and you know that you can run this one and it will, um, I will be able to um, see the code and see um, the related uh, software. So this is the way it looks. So you see that it's inside the web browser and you have a page with um, yeah, titles and you have those so-called cells. And whenever you execute such a cell, it will run the code inside the cell and uh, you will see the output of the code afterwards. Once we get to it, um, we'll also see how that, um, you will also see how that works because I will be showcasing some of those during the recorded lectures. Um, Python is excellent. It's an excellent programming language, especially for machine learning, and it's catching up very quickly, but it doesn't perform well at some tasks. And especially in channel coding, the use of Python is not really widespread, and so there is not a big code base that is available. Therefore, we resort to MATLAB, and um, MATLAB is a very powerful tool and it has very powerful features for channel coding and communications. So we'll also use MATLAB to run the um, simulations. So why is this a good thing? Well, knowing two programming languages is important because it first strengthens your programming skills, it strengthens your flexibility and your ability to think of not in terms of a programming language, but in a more abstract way. Because you shouldn't think of how can I do this in this specific programming language AB, but you should think about how can I solve this problem. And the programming language is nothing else as your hammer. And you should be able to use multiple hammers. And if you're looking for future employment, it's also good to know at least Py, both Python and MATLAB, because most employers nowadays, they ask for both languages. So the simulations, they can be found online on GitHub. So you can take a look at GitHub and especially at this, uh, this is our GitHub page. You can find the lecture examples of all our lectures. We'll update the code base regularly. So please make sure that you have the latest version. And the easiest thing is that if you have a Git client, so Git is a software, a version control system, you can just clone the repository using this command. And then once you have it cloned, you can always get the latest version just by pulling. So git pull. Because we use this version control system, whenever you have a suggestion for change, please make a pull request. And then we can incorporate your changes also inside the code base. Okay, so this is the end of this first video about goals and motivation of the, uh, about the organizational stuff of the lecture. In the next video, we will look at the goals and the motivation that is behind this lecture. And then um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for listening.